here. And we're going to talk about how we classify numbers. Now, mathematicians classify numbers just like a botanist would classify plants or a biologist would classify different animals. And what we're going to begin with is we're going to talk about real numbers. And what are real numbers? Well, real numbers are all numbers. All numbers that we can work with are real. Just like if you were a biologist, all the animals fall under the animal kingdom, right? So when we talk about numbers, we're talking about real numbers. And all numbers are real. So all numbers are going to be real. The only ones that aren't are division by zero and negative square root. So all the numbers that we work with are going to be real numbers. We don't work with division by zero, okay, or negatives underneath the root. So all numbers are going to be classified as real numbers. Just like all animals are animals, all plants are plants. Then we're going to break the real numbers down into rational and irrational. And we'll start off with the rational numbers. And the rational numbers are going to be integers, which we'll talk about later. We've got fractions. We've got whole numbers. We've got decimals that either terminate or repeat. So those are all going to be rational numbers. And we're going to look at examples. So when you look at some examples, these are all going to be rational numbers. Most numbers are rational. 5, that's a rational number. 3 fifths, that's a rational number. Negative 12, that's a rational number. 0 is a rational number. 1.9, that's a rational number because it stops. The decimal, it stops. Minus 2.8. 3, 4 with the bar on the top. Okay, that bar means it repeats, and that's also a rational number. Okay, so when we talk about numbers, we've got all numbers we're going to be working with are real. So everything we work with is, is classified as a real number. If we, can, if we can add it to another number, subtract it, it's real. Below that we have rational, and we're also going to in a moment talk about the irrational numbers. And if we were a biologist, it might be we're looking at animals, and then we're looking at mammals and amphibians, two different types. Okay, Same thing here. They're all animals, right? Mammals and amphibians. In this case, though, we've got real numbers, so everything's a real number, and we've got rational, and we've got irrational. And what are the irrational numbers? Well, irrational numbers, these are going to be everything else. So when we talk about irrational numbers, these are square roots that won't break down. We've got decimals that never stop. And then we also have special numbers like pi. Remember, we use that symbol for pi. Then. So 
special numbers like pi. So let's look at some examples. Square root of 2. Okay, why is the square root of 2 an irrational number? Well, if we take the square root of 2 in our calculator, it doesn't come out to be a whole number, does it? Right? It goes on forever. If it's a decimal that never stops, it's an irrational number. 2 doesn't break down. Now, if I would have said 4, square root of 4 is 2, and it would have been rational. We'll talk about more of that later, but square root of 2 is an irrational number because it does not break down. Square root of 3 is an irrational number. How about 1.74321 with a dot, dot, dot? Okay, the dot, 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 that means it goes on forever. And then we've got special numbers again. And about the only special number that we use in this course is pi. There's other ones. There's Euler's number E. But those are college algebra things that we talk about. But in this class, we're looking at square roots and decimals that never stop or repeat themselves. And special numbers, in our case, the only special number is pi. And we're going to break down the rational numbers further. We're not going to break down the irrational numbers, because they don't really break down. But the rational numbers, we can break them down further. And the rational numbers, we can break them down into integers. And integers are just positive and negative whole numbers. plus zero. So basically, no fractions or decimals. So no fractions and no decimals here. Okay, so Integers are positive and negative whole numbers. Zero is also in there. I always put plus zero because sometimes people forget that zero. Zero is actually a whole number, but I put plus zero so we know it's in there. No fractions and no decimals. So what are some examples? How about negative three? Positive five. Zero. Fourteen. Negative two. Those are all integers. Now, the integers we can then break down into whole numbers. And so whole numbers are just going to be positive integers. And zero. So positive integers and zero. So no fractions no decimals, and they all have to either be positive or zero. So what are some examples of the whole numbers? 5, 12, 18, 0, and there's lots of others too. Right? Those are just a couple of examples. So whole numbers have to be positive or zero. No fractions and no decimals at all. So no fractions, no decimals, must be positive or zero. And then finally, we have the natural numbers, or sometimes called the counting numbers. Our textbook calls them the natural numbers, so that's what we're going to be using. And these are just positive integers. No zero. Zero is not a natural number. So then we're going to look at some natural numbers. Let's look at these for examples. Twelve. Two. Nineteen. Okay, those are all natural numbers. So no fractions, no decimals. Zero is not a natural number. 
and they've got to be positive. Now, in order to classify numbers, we use a tree. And here's what the tree looks like. We've got real numbers up at the top. All numbers are real numbers, and then they break down into either rational or irrational. And then the rational numbers break down into integers. whole numbers and then finally natural numbers. How we classified them was how they were discovered. When we talk about natural numbers, okay, those are also called counting numbers. And they're never negative, no fractions or decimals. Those are things on your hand, okay? When man first started working with the numbers, what did he have? He had no idea what negatives were. That wasn't even a concept. He didn't know what zero was, right? But he had fingers on his hand. He could count those. Those are the natural numbers. So man started with natural numbers. And then after a while, you know, counting number of cows, numbers of sheep, things like that. After a while, then they needed zero. Well, what does zero mean? Okay. Someone figured out none, zero. Okay, so zero was introduced, so that it added in the whole numbers. They still didn't know what negatives meant, because you're, you're, you're counting cattle or, or sheep, something like that. And so what's a negative sheep? You don't know. But then once they started working with, with, with currency and talking about debt, then they, they looked at ne negative numbers, and that made the integers. And then after a while, then they figured out fractions and decimals. And then they looked at things that weren't rational. So those, then they started discovering square roots and decimals that never stopped and special numbers. And then finally, they classified everything they work with today as a real number. In college algebra, you'll learn that there are, are real and there's non-real numbers. But we don't discuss those at all. Okay, that's beyond the scope of this course. All we talk about is real numbers. Now, this tree is going to help us classify numbers. So I'm going to give you some numbers, and we're going to classify them. Now, a number, when we classify it, is usually more than one type. So we'll do three of these. So we're going to classify the following. Now, they can be more than one type, and almost all of them are going to be more than one type. So let's start with negative 3. So let's classify what negative 3 is. Now, I always start at the bottom, and I work my way up. So is negative 3, is negative 3 a natural number? Okay, well, let's remember what natural numbers are. Natural numbers, you have to be able to count how many fingers. Do you have a, a negative three fingers? No. So it's not a natural number. Is it a whole number? No, because those have to also be positive or zero. Is negative three an integer? Yeah, right? Negative three is an integer, and you follow it up. So it's an integer, okay? It's rational when we follow it up, and it's also what? Real, because everything is real. So negative 3 is an integer. It's rational. And it's also real. What about minus 8.73? Rational or irrational? Well, we know it's rational. Okay. Why is it rational? Because it's decimal that stops. Is it a natural number? No. Whole number? No. Is it an integer? No. But it is rational. And what else? Real. So it's rational. And it's also real. And one more. How about the square root of 7? Is that rational 
or is that irrational? Okay, it's going to be irrational. Why? Because 7 is not a perfect square. So it's irrational. And what is everything also? Real. So it's irrational. And it is also real. So that's how we classify numbers. And we classify them based upon how they were discovered and how man started to use numbers. We do have another operation that we haven't talked about much at all yet. And that's going to be the absolute value. Okay, so we're now going to talk about the absolute value. And we're going to talk about how that works. And we're still in 1.3. So we're going to talk about the absolute value. These are called absolute value bars. Okay, so these are absolute value bars. And what the absolute value bars do is they make whatever's inside come out to be positive. So absolute values come out positive. Absolute value bars come out to be positive. So let's work with some absolute values. So we're going to simplify now some absolute values. What's the absolute value of 8? Well, what we do with the absolute values is we take whatever's in there and make it come out to be positive. Now, if it's already positive, it just stays positive. So that's 8. So uh, the absolute value of 8 is 8. And I should put on here positive or 0 because absolute value of 0 is 0. So sorry about that. So make sure you add on that or 0. So the absolute value of 8 is 8. What about the absolute value of minus 4? Well, the absolute value of minus 4 would then be what? Positive 4. Okay? So you make whatever's inside come out to be positive. We have to be careful, though, if there's a negative in front. The absolute value of a negative in front, 5. What would that be? Negative 5. Why would it be negative 5? Well, the absolute value is done first. So the absolute value of 5 is 5. So absolute values are done first. So the first thing we do is we do that absolute value. And then what about the negative? It comes along with it. So the absolute value of negative 5 in front with the negative in front would be negative 5. If it's inside, it becomes positive. Now, what about a negative in front and a negative inside? Uh, be careful. Okay, order of operations. Now, when we take a negative and a negative and make it positive, that's multiplication. Absolute values are done before multiplication. So I can't cancel these out because that's multiplication. So the first thing I do is I take the absolute value of that negative 3. And what's the absolute value of that negative 3? Three? 3. And then what's out in front just comes along with it? Negative. So what would that come out to give you for your answer? Negative 3. The absolute value is done first. If there's a negative in front, it just comes along with it. Okay, what about if we need, if we have things inside of the absolute value? What about this one? What about 8 minus 2 inside the absolute value bars? Okay, how do we work this one out? Well, okay, 
we do what's inside the absolute value first. Absolute values are like parentheses. Only difference is at the end we make it positive. So we do what's inside of the absolute value first. And 8 minus 2 is what? 6. And now what's the absolute value of 6? 6. So we didn't ever make this too positive, did we? We did what's inside first, and then we did our absolute value after that. So let's try one more. Before I move on to more absolute values and, and looking at inequalities with these, how about the uh, minus in front? How about the absolute value of a minus 9 inside? plus the absolute value of 8 plus 10 inside the absolute value bars. So let's try to simplify this one down. Okay, so this is it's kind of bringing it up to the next level. And when we look at this, we think of the absolute value bars kind of like parentheses. Only difference is we make them positive at the end. So order of operations, we're going to do what's inside first. So let's look at our second set. 8 plus 10, that makes it a 18. And you can skip steps two. I'm not. But you can. Now, what do we have next? Absolute value bars. So what's the absolute value of this negative 9? Okay, 9, and then what comes down with it? Negative. So it comes out to be negative, doesn't it? Right, negative 9 there. And then we've got a plus. What's the absolute value of 18? 18. Okay, now, how can I rewrite this so it's a little bit easier? It looks, it looks odd the way it is. I can rewrite this as long as the symbols stay the same. So I can rewrite this as 18 because it's positive minus 9. Right? I can switch the order as long as we're careful and make sure that negative stays with it. Okay, so the 9 is negative. Now we know what to do because 18 minus 9, what does 18 minus 9 come out to be? 9. So what would your answer there be? 9. Now this is how you can use the order to make your life easier. If you have trouble with this because the minus is out in front, you can rewrite it so that the 18 is in front and the negative 9 is behind and make it easier. So you can rewrite subtraction a little bit differently to make it easier. Just switch the order around. Just make sure the negative stays with it. Okay. Let's look at a couple of these inequality absolute values. Actually, I think we'll just, just do one of these. Um, let's look at question 85, and this is on page 51. Because I think we can just get by with just one of these. Question 85. We have now the absolute value of 6 minus 5 is greater than or equal to the absolute value of 6 minus 2. Well, what do we do? We need to see if this is true or false. So true or false here. Well, how do we figure out if this is true or false? Well, what we do is we work it out. So 6 minus 5. 6 minus 5 is 1. We do the insides first. And 6 minus 2, well, 6 minus 2 is a 4. The absolute value of 1 is 1. And the absolute value of 4 is 4. Is this now true or false? Well, Watch which way it's pointing here. Okay. When we look at the, abs the inequalities, 
Remember, it wants to open towards the larger number or point towards a smaller one. But what's it doing? One, right, is a smaller number. So this would be what? False, right? Because you want it to be opening towards a larger number. Four is a larger number, and it's opening towards a smaller one. It's pointing the wrong way, so that would make that one then false. Okay. Now let's look at our homework and make sure we know how to work these out. Okay, some of these questions you may just have to think about a bit. Like the first one, it's true or false. Every whole number is a real number. We'll go back and look at your tree that we talked, that we made, and look at how we talked about numbers and see if you think that's true or false. We did one like question two already. Question three and four, what they want on these is they want you to express it as either a positive or a negative number. So on question three, it says, on a cloudy day, the water temperature in the swimming pool drops three degrees. So what am I looking for here? When I say drops three degrees, that means we're going to use a minus three, right? And like on question four, it says gain. So gain, that would make it what? Positive. Uh, question five, think about that one as well. Be careful on question five and think about zero. Because question five says the absolute value of any number is positive. Well, consider zero and see if that makes it true or false. Question six, we've talked about those. Okay, question seven. Now, there's lots of choices that will work for question seven. All we have to find is one number. So we want a number between minus 10 and 10 that is a real number but not an integer. So when it says it's a real number but not an integer, what, would that, what could that be? That could be a fraction, right? That could be a decimal. That could be a square root. As long as it's in between minus 10 and 10 and not an integer. So just write down some number that's in between minus 10 and 10 that is not an integer. And there's all kinds of different choices. Question 8. When we talk about opposite, in this case, opposite, we're talking about changing the signs. So when I say opposite, in, in this case, we're talking about changing the sign. So what's the opposite of a negative 7? Seven? 7. Okay, so I'm just going to fill this one in so you understand how it works. So the opposite of negative 7 is 7, right? So opposite means change the sign. The absolute value of negative 7 is what? 7, same thing. Okay. The opposite of the absolute value of negative 7 is what? Well, what? okay. Yep, because the opposite means we change the sign. Now, absolute value of negative 7 is what? 7, but we want the opposite of that, so that would be what? Negative 7. And the absolute value of the opposite of negative 7. Okay, so what's the opposite of negative 7? 7. And what's the absolute value of 7? 7. So that's what I want there. And I just worked that one out so you would understand what I'm looking for. An opposite just means changing the signs. The next one is we want to find the smaller numbers. And smaller meaning the number closer to zero. Okay, question 12 you may have to think about a bit. Bless you. And question 13, we did this one just a minute ago when we switched the order to make subtraction a little bit easier. Remember, we, we looked at one of these just a moment ago. 
Remember this one, right? We switched the order here to make it easier. And that's what I'm just wanting you to see. You can come up with a different example. I can switch the order to make it easier. Let me just give an example. And, and you could even use that one if you want. Okay, we've talked about those again. Question 16, you can find a number that, that doesn't work there. Uh, question 17. What's the additive inverse of zero? And now, inverse means opposite. What is zero? We didn't have an opposite. No, I mean, so the additive inverse of zero is just zero. That's all I want there. It's the same. Because zero doesn't have a sign, right? Zero is zero. But the additive inverse means you change the sign, and you can't change the sign of zero. Uh, question 19, we've done. One like it. Kind of talked about it. What happens with the double negatives here on 19? It's parentheses now. Okay, so these double negatives would make it what? Positive. Absolute values are different, but when they're back-to-back -back signs, back-to-back -back negatives, and we'll talk more about that next week, but when they're back-to-back -back negatives like that, you can make it positive, as long as it's not absolute values. Absolute values are different. And now you can see if that's true or false. In question 20, we've talked about that one as well. So now that we've talked about those, what's going to be our homework? Just so we know what our homework is. So your homework now, and what we've covered, is 1, 1. You should be able to do them all. 1, 2. You should be able to do them all. And 1, 3. You should be able to do them all. Now, before you leave, I'd like for you to sign the sign-in sheet. So make sure your name's on the sign-in sheet. If your name is not on the sign-in sheet, Add it to the bottom, and you might want to talk to the business office and see why your name is not on there. I'm not going to pick up homework next week, though, right? It's in that packet. So the first 15, 20 minutes of class next week, we're going to go over any questions that you might have out of your homework. So out of 1, 1 through 1, 3. Then we'll cover new material. I think you'll find, though, that the homework is not going to take that long to go through. A lot of it is just basic definitions. The homework out of 1, 2 is probably going to take you the longest. But it, it, especially 1, 1, it shouldn't take that long to go through some of those questions. They're, they're pretty quick. So I will see everyone next week then, and that's going to be your homework. And if you want to see the notes and you want to see the lecture again, you can check on Canvas later this afternoon. So I'll have it posted this afternoon in Canvas.